is up guys and welcome to the video. My name is Carly and I like to talk about personal finance and fun and exciting ways to make and invest your money. Now I'm going to keep this intro short because I realize there is a huge problem here in America. More than 69% of Americans don't have a savings account of $1,000 or more. I'm going to walk you through how to budget your money and figure out how much you can save every single month so you can quickly get that savings account up in case anything were to ever happen or if you're saving for a certain goal, whatever that may be. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. Because this topic is so important to me, I also linked in the description a free Excel spreadsheet to help you budget your money to see where all of your money is going and where it's coming from and how much you can be saving. What is that? A YouTuber that gives away something for free to help you? No course? What's the catch? No catch. I've also linked a published article by myself about budgeting in the description if you'd like to read that as well. But let's go ahead and begin. Before saving, it's very important to get in the mindset of a saver. What do I mean by that? You need to understand that saving is money that you are setting aside for yourself, meaning you're dedicating this money to yourself that you're not going to give to anybody else. I think that statement's very important to understand because you work very hard for your money. And if you think about it, if you're not saving anything, that means you're working so hard to keep fulfilling other people's dreams instead of fueling your own life, aka paying yourself first. Your money is typically given to you based on your time, and your time is absolutely priceless. If I were to ask a group of people, if I were to say time is what? Nine times out of ten, all the people are going to say money. Wrong. Time is priceless. Money can come and go, but time is never going to come back. So if you are utilizing most of your time trying to make money, don't just give this money away. You need to save some of this. That way you're paying yourself money that you've worked really hard for. This is money that you're dedicating to yourself and not to other people. After understanding the mindset that you need to have in order to be an excellent saver, you need to figure out your income now. I like to budget on a month to month basis because every single month my income changes a little bit. So I like to make sure that I have a budget sheet made for each and every single month. I actually use the Excel doc that I've placed in the description that I can just go in and I can edit the numbers and it'll calculate it for me every single month. So things in the income column that you'll need to include your annual salary divided by 12 or if you have an hourly paid job, multiple jobs, anything that you're making in that month, child support, an allowance, whatever that may be, Fill that into the income chart and lay it out so you can see exactly how much you are getting that month. After you know how much that you're getting for that month, now you want to know how much is going out that month. In this column, I like to start with any reoccurring purchases that happen every single month. Reoccurring purchases are really easy to stack up nowadays because everywhere and everything has a subscription-based membership, meaning that you're signing up for these things and they make it so easy to sign up, but so hard to cancel. So it's $12 here, $10 here, $2 there and even though it sounds like a little bit whenever you sign up you don't even realize how much is racking up on your entire list of reoccurring purchases in an outgoing expense column I want you to list all of your reoccurring expenses this could be a gym membership your Netflix account your Hulu account your supreme hoodie account whatever that may be and after you have all of your reoccurring purchases now go into the monthly payments that you make like your rent or your mortgage gas groceries monthly payment that you make on a student loan anything that's automatically coming out or that you have to pay put in the outgoing expenses notice that I say have to pay don't put in the entertainment expense or extra money that you spend only put what has to come out that month the bare necessities. So now that you have your income filled out and your outgoing expenses, this is where you can take your income and your outgoing expenses and you can subtract. I like to call this number your raw income because this is the money that you have left over to spend on whatever it is you please. Because now that all of your bare necessities are taken care of, this is the rest of your income that you have. You're like, Heck yeah. I'm gonna go get me a Supreme hoodie. No, instead of going out and getting that Supreme hoodie, you need to figure out out of that amount of money what to save. The more you save, the more you're going to end up with. If you have a goal, like buying a house or buying a car, make that the ultimate goal, that's a number that you're trying to reach. If you're just trying to make a cushy security fund, have a number that's appropriate for you to reach. And with this money that you are able to save, I would recommend opening up an online savings account that has a high yield interest. This way, you're making just passively free money. It may not be much, but any free money is good money. And I don't think anybody can argue me on that. Another great thing about opening up a high yield interest account is that your money doesn't lose as much value whenever it comes to inflation. If you just have some money sitting under your bed and you're hiding it, that money is actually losing its value due to inflation, which typically rises about 3% every single year. Saving it in that piggy bank, putting it under your bed, it's just losing its value that way. Put it into a high yield savings account. So that way your money's value for the most part is 
is protected. Some high yield savings accounts that I would recommend would be Marcus Goldman Sachs, which I have an account with, Ally Bank, and HSBC. Online banks have the capability to pay out more money through interest because they don't have a brick and mortar location. Now it is important whenever you're looking for a high yield savings account to make sure that this account is FDIC insured and the ideal account is compounded daily. And according to Einstein himself, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world if it's working for you. Revolving debt would be an example of how compound interest is working against you but is making someone else tremendously rich. But we won't get into that. If you want to learn more about revolving debt and how to decrease your credit card debt, go ahead and watch my video on here of how to get rid of debt fast. But jumping back in. So we've discussed how to get into the mindset of a great saver, how to calculate how much you're getting every single month, what's coming out of that income every single month, and the raw amount that you have left over so you can figure out how much you can be saving every single month. Now, the more money that you save out of this raw amount, the quicker you can achieve financial freedom if you're investing and saving your money correctly. The piggy bank is old news. There are so many ways to save and invest and earn passive income that there's no reason to work until you die. And it is absolutely true that if you don't learn how to save and how to invest your money, you will work until you die. My goal through my YouTube channel is to inspire and influence other people about how to become financially free so you can start seeing your time more as precious instead of a dollar sign. And whenever it comes to budgeting and saving, of course you need to work on your spending. If you have a high spending habit, it's a really good idea and I challenge you to write down everything that you spend in an entire month. This will really lay out and let you see how much you're spending. Or you could always use an app, the lazy way of tracking your spending. And a couple great apps that I like are mint.com or or an app called Clarity. These apps are totally free and they lay out your spending for you and actually build a budget for you based on your spending habits. This is a great way to see what areas you're spending the most money on. For example, if you're eating out too much or going to the movies too much, these apps are great for laying out that information. Another app that I do recommend is gonna be Digit. Now this app does cost money, it's a monthly subscription, so you're gonna have to add that into your outgoing expenses. But what I really like about the app Digit is that Digit allows you to make different savings goals and Digit will passively just take money from your debit account and take a certain amount based on your spending pattern so it doesn't take too much and we'll add it to these different goals cent by cent until it adds it up and you don't even realize you're saving. I really like this app because it can also link up to your student loans, mortgage payments, or credit cards to help you pay off those debts faster. If you're interested in joining the app Digit, use the link down below and you'll get a free $5 in your account. I hope this information could be useful and I hope this helps you make a step closer to your goals. Goals are very important to me and I hope that I can spark something in my followers and viewers to begin working towards towards those goals, working towards financial freedom, and learning how to reach their goals faster and more efficiently. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. It really helps new YouTubers like myself and content creators and helps support the time that we put into these videos to bring to you. Thanks so much and I hope to see you on the next one. See you later.